I find our next project from some hard time inspiration. We take an old cop car and turn it into a turbocharged sleeper and nearly double the horsepower. A weekend getaway, I guess you could say I had a bit of time on my hands to ponder a few things like a new project to work on when I get back to the shop. See that? The cars, you, that's you. See you. And while I was on this small vacation, I had the opportunity to talk with the locals. See those cars, you, right there. I think we got it. You could say they're familiar with what I had in mind, and they're pretty good at doing the research. Look at me! You know how much this would cost? Do you have any idea? Oh, yeah, Street Regal. You think Hard Charger's gonna save you? I don't think so. No! So I just had to run this great idea by my old buddy. Plus, I needed to catch up with him anyways. Hey, man, it's Tom. Brother, I need you to help me out. I'm in kind of a pinch here. It's only a couple grand. Come on, man. Heck, I've helped you before and didn't tell nobody about it. Come on. Hello? Man, that was my only call. Yo, Big Mama, thanks. You don't mind if I ride up front, do you? I guess. What this dude's problem is, heck, he's a four man through and through. He must not be used to these fine amenities. So, man, what do you think about this jewel? Uh, I don't like it. Got four doors, there ain't no Cadillac. This old girl's got a lot of potential. I don't think so. this thing. It's great if you got to read a map. Unreal. I bet that skinny pit will change your mind. All right, big man, pin it. This thing's got the 4.6 liter police intercept. And with that cop suspension, cop brakes, cop rear axle, and cop wheels. I guess it's not so bad after all. Told you. This thing is gonna be a whole lot of fun. That's right, we got ourselves a 2008 Ford Crown Victoria P71 Police Interceptor. Now this thing is 4,000 pounds, it's got a full frame under, it's not fast, four doors, and about 250 horse under the hood. Now by no means is this thing a muscle car by any definition, but it does share that two valve V8 with the Mustang GT, so you can do some bolt-on parts like a throttle body, cold air kit, things like that, underdrive pulleys, but you're only gonna get a little bit of power. You can even do long tubes, but bang for your buck, it's not where it's at. We need big power and we need it quick. I got the solution right here and that isn't your mama's hair dryer, big guy. I love it. Is this like a direct fit for this car? This is a direct universal kit that only takes a little bit of, you know, modifying to make it fit whatever you want to. That's okay though, because that means it's perfect for us and perfect for this car. Yeah, for sure, because this whole thing being an odd duck like it is, well, sometimes you gotta think outside the box. 
And this thing mounts in the back, right, STS? Mm -hmm. This is a tailpipe turbo, so we don't have to fool with the intercooler up front. So it's actually going to save us a bit of time. We just have to do quite a bit of plumbing. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be worth it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I love it. Tell you what, you go get a welder and a torch. I'll get the battery disconnected <laughs> and get this thing in the air. I got a metric shoehorn that's going to help. Perfect. We start installing the turbo with a little help. Then we attack the fuel system and take it to the dyno. We're working on the turbo install on our Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. Got the exhaust cut off behind the cats all the way to the back and mounted the turbo right here where the driver's side muffler used to live. Tommy made this really cool bracket, welded it in solid. Now it's just time to do a whole bunch of plumbing. That's on purpose, right? Because normally they belong up front. Yeah, this is on purpose. There's like a method to this madness. You know, you run the charge pipe up here and it just acts as the intercooler as it goes up and just plumb it right into the engine. It's well, magic. Yeah, you know, it's low key for sure. It's hidden, you won't see anything under the hood, I guess if you're going for a sleeper kind of look. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're here because I know you've done turbo kits before. I was kind of hoping you would give me some pointers on how to route these tubes front to back, the hot and the cold side. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple from where you're at. All you gotta do is connect the exhaust into the turbine, that'll spin the turbocharger. Then you just gotta get the fresh air from the compressor housing all the way up front. So a couple of straight runs of tube, maybe a jog over, but really the first thing you gotta do is mount the other turbo. Um, no, there's just, <laughs> it's just the one. I mean, what do you want? This thing? Two, I want two no, turbos. No, 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 this is gonna be enough, trust me. Stock engine, we don't wanna blow this thing up. All right, where's the tube at? Um, it's right over there. Only so you're gonna, one turbo. Wait, you're going to help? Yes. Start somewhere in there. So really the first thing that I'm trying to do here is get this driver's side exhaust shoved over as far as we can in this hump in the cross member because we're going to have to have the cold charge pipe coming up in this same space. So we're going to save room where we can. I think this one's just about ready to weld. We're off to the races. Now we're talking hot side, cold side when it comes to that turbocharging. For those of you who don't know what that means, let me show you. Turbochargers are forced induction devices that use exhaust energy to cram more air into an engine. Exhaust flow from a header drives the blades of a turbine wheel before it discharges. On the other side, an aluminum impeller wheel draws in and compresses fresh air. These wheels ride on a close tolerance shaft that can spin well over 100,000 RPM. Race motor turbos can easily increase intake pressure by as much as 50 pounds. Because the guys are running a single turbocharger on a V8 application, we've got to get exhaust from both banks into a single two and a half inch pipe. Now you can buy a Y pipe off the shelf, but this is a budget build, so we're gonna make our own. I'm gonna start with two of these 45 degree bends and cut them right after the radius. Then I'm gonna come through and cut them kind of along the length here and stick them together. That way I can connect the two and a half inch pipe right on the end, and there you go, you've got your own Y pipe. Once I have the two halves of the Y exactly where I want them, I'll tack everything together and then trim off the end so it fits perfectly with a two and a half inch pipe. Once everything's mocked up, I'll fully weld the front half of the system together. While all of that's being done, I'm gonna be working on the oiling system. Turbos have to have pressurized oil fed from the engine into the top. There's a fitting up here where it goes in. And then there's gotta be a return line that goes back to the engine. That's what this is right here at the bottom. It's called an oil drain back. Now, if you have a remote mount turbo like we have, or if your turbos are mounted low, you need a pump to help get that oil back to the engine. And that's what this is right here, the scavenge pump. Just gonna mount it to the frame right here. This is gonna be the inlet, and then it's gonna come out here back to the engine. I just have to plumb from here to here, and from here to the engine. Of course, before I do that, I need to get this thing mounted to the frame. Now all we got to do is connect that to the turbo, we're in business. The 
process on the rear half is exactly the same as the front. Trim the pipe until you're happy and weld it together. Okay. Now we get her welded up. All right, look at that, that looks good. Why do these welds not look as nice as the ones you do on your projects though? Well, you said you wanted down and dirty, you wanted quick, you gave me aluminized tubing and a MIG welder, so that's what you got. Well, that's what we wanted, it's perfect. All right, well, the hot side is pretty much wrapped up. The exhaust will make its way nice and smoothly into the turbine. Um, the only thing you're gonna have to do is finish welding this V-band ring on there, because you probably need to take the turbo off just to get to it. And then the wastegate. Somebody's gonna have to punch a hole in this elbow right here, get that thing mounted up to keep the boost levels under control. Yeah, we can do that. We gotta make a tailpipe for it anyway, and we gotta wire up the scavenge pump, get an air filter on here, and then run the charge pipe to the front. But other than that, I think we're done underneath. Yeah, so other than physically mounting the turbo and plumbing it, what other changes are you going to make to the car to make it all run together? We're going to upgrade the fuel system, starting with the pump, swapping in some bigger injectors, and then throw in a tune in it. She should fire right up. Yep, going to keep it simple. You guys got any, like, horsepower goals for this thing, or? He's pretty ambitious. Yeah, I, I'd like to make 400 at the tire. All right, well, I want to hear this thing run when you're done, but I got to get back to work for now, so let me know. Sure thing. We have to feed the fire with an upgraded fuel system and then we'll see how much power it makes. Man, we are making some serious progress on our 08 Crown Vic Police Interceptor. I know this may sound a little unconventional, but we are doing a generic single turbo system mounted out back here where the driver's side muffler used to be. It's going to be tons of fun. LT came in from Truck Tech, welded up the hot side of our exhaust system. That's going into the turbo. And then coming out of the turbo, he's got this nice downpipe and the wastegate looks really nice. Then we focused on the cold side. We got this air filter here. Probably not going to be able to drive this thing in the rain, but that's okay because we don't want to suck any water in there. But we also did the charge pipe. Goes from two, two and a quarter, up to two and a half. Slides right up here next to the exhaust and goes up into the engine bay. We haven't connected it to the throttle body yet, but that's going to be in just a little bit. So as far as things that are left to do under here, my checklist is pretty short. The main item is going to be to get that fuel pump out of there because we need to upgrade that. More fuel to match more air going to that engine. So I'm going to do that now. This is for later. But first, we need to get quite a bit of work done under the hood. We can get the stock air box out of the way. It can go in the trash. We need to get the fuel rail out because we need to modify it. And while we're in there, we can put in some colder plugs. Well, I have a problem. I was going to modify the factory fuel rail and then run a return to the back of the car. It's not going to be quite that simple. I was trying to get all the fittings together to make that happen and I couldn't find the fittings to adapt the factory fuel feed line to my regulator. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got this magical blue fitting I'm going to show you here in just a minute. But let's start at the pump. Let's assume the car's facing this way. That's the front of the car. Coming out of the pump is the factory fuel feed line. It's just a male barb. So that's going to snap right into here. On the other end of this is a dash six. That'll be pressurized fuel, comes through here, through my filter, and eventually to the fuel pressure regulator, where it'll get regulated down and come out of this dash eight fitting here. I'll make a hose that comes over toward the rail, and that's where this blue fitting comes in. It's got a male spring lock on one side and a dash eight on the other. So it's going to snap right into my fuel rail, and then the other end of my feed from the regulator will go right here and then the engine's gonna get all the fuel it needs, it's gonna be happy and healthy. As for the unused fuel, it's gonna come out of the bottom of the regulator here, that's the return, dash six, all the way to the back of the car. Now since this car is not equipped with a fuel return, we're gonna to have to make our own. So I've got the fuel pump assembly out, I'm gonna drill a hole in the hat, install this dash six bulkhead fitting, and then the other end of my return hose will screw onto that, and voila, we have a return style system. I'm gonna start I get the injectors and the rail back in, and then we can make ourselves a fuel system. All 
All right, now we can take care of that fuel pump. Well, I pretty much have my intake tube figured all out. Now I just need to glue them together and make it one piece. You saw me pull it out earlier and I've referenced it a few times and now it's time to attack it and that's gonna be this fuel pump assembly here. It's got the hat, the feed line comes out right here. Also has sending unit right here to tell you how much fuel you have and then the pump right here at the bottom. The main thing we need to do is swap that pump out. It's gonna be a very similar pump made by Holly Sniper EFI. This one pumps out 340 liters per hour. So although it looks similar, this thing's way more powerful and it'll handle everything we need. We just need to get it mounted in there. It's gonna mount a slightly bit different than the factory one. We need to wire it up a little differently as well. And once we get that done, then we'll be able to drill a hole into our hat here. I mentioned this earlier, the return line. So I'll install the bulkhead fitting in there. And then we can slide this thing back into the tank, get it bolted in, wire it up, connect some fuel lines, and we will have ourselves a return style fuel system. And that looks nice. Yeah, that ought to do the trick to adding a few PSI to that throttle body. Right, so we've got air. I just wrapped up the fuel system. You know what that means? Dino time. I'm ready. Heck yeah. Now we decided to stick with the original engine in our Crown Vic, but if we had decided to upgrade it, this is exactly what we would have gone with. This is a remanufactured 4.6 liter two valve from Powertrain Products. The block is 100% CNC machined. They've added a high volume oil pump. It comes with multi-layer steel head gaskets and those spark plug hole problems that are a real pain have been taken care of. They throw in a new timing cover, oil pan, and all the gaskets you need to get it installed. So if you need a replacement engine or you're looking for an engine for your project, check out Powertrain Products. In fact, I think I'm gonna hang on to this one for a while. We might need it. We've added the ingredients. Now let's see how it does on the dyno. Hey guys, we're down here in engine power. We got our police cruiser strapped onto the dyno and we're about to see what kind of power we get from installing that turbo. Now we did set us a baseline a while back and this is what it did. I see my gun. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> 200. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, hopefully we can get just a little bit more than that, but we're going to need a custom tune to do it. So we've got Alex Pites from Pites Performance Tunes. He's the owner and tuner there. Alex, thanks for joining us. Hey, happy to be here. I know you've got HP Tuner's shirt on. I guess uh, that's who we're going to be using today. What exactly do you do with HP Tuner's? Well, I do some training for HP tuners and also I do some subcontracted tuning from the, for them from time to time. So you're kind of a guru with that stuff? I guess you could say that, yes. Uh, where, where are we at with the Crown Vic project now? Well, as of right now, we've got a startup tune loaded into it. We got it on the dyno. We've done some part throttle validation, making sure fueling looks good, which it does, which is really good. Now we're going to go to wide open throttle testing. Uh, we're going to do an initial test from 2,500 to 5,000 RPM just to check the fueling make sure it's safe, make sure there's no knock, and then we can go from there and try to make some power. Cool, let's do it, man. Awesome. All right, here we go. Well, we definitely made some progress. We're at 290. 290, that doesn't sound too bad for a partial pull. Alex, what about from your end? Yeah, it's not doing too bad for wide open throttle, partial pull. I've got some things to adjust. I'm uh, gonna try lock the converter to get less slip and try to adjust the fueling and see where we're at from there. Sounds good, let's do it. All right. All right, we got the new tune loaded in. Everything's looking good. I think we're ready to make full pull. All right, ready. Tom, are you ready? Yes, sir. This is the one, Tom. This is the one. This is the one. This old girl sounds good. What it is. <laughs> we were rocking and rolling, buddy. Man, it did all right. What'd it make? 329. Yeah! Yes, sir. I mean, percentage wise, that's a lot more than it made stock, right? That's almost like a six pack worthy right there. And I'm telling you, I bet you if we got in this thing and took it out on the street, it'd be handy. It'd feel like 629. <laughs> Alex? And this guy didn't even like this car at one time. What do you think? Yeah, we're looking good. Um, you're gonna need to adjust some fueling up top, um, add a little more fuel, and uh, try another pull. But yeah, we're definitely in, heading in the right direction. Cool, you think it's got more left in it? Yeah, I think we do. 
Well, let this man work his magic. I'll just stay over here at the video game and keep enjoying myself. All right, so we made some final adjustments here. Everything's looking pretty good. He's pretty happy. We're gonna do the full pull and we'll see what we make for power. All right, go. Yes, sir. Wow. We made 368 on that one. <laughs> nice. Alex, what do you think? I mean, I think it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun on the street. It made 410 pound foot of torque, 368 horsepower. I mean, it's really hard to uh, beat that out of an old Crown Victoria. Yeah. And for especially for as little as we've done, we just did the little turbo kit and upgraded the fuel system and brought you in, and that that's pretty much it. I mean, I mean that's. 160 horsepower gain from just a little bit of boost. So what should we do with the car now? Uh, we should go have a blast with it. I wish I could join you guys, actually. Yeah, it's definitely going to be. Thanks for your help, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure. I'll have to help you guys out. I look forward to working work with you guys again in the future. Same here. Take it easy. Only problem that I see you right now. Strapped to the dyno. No, you're in the driver's seat. <laughs> you can drive. <laughs> <laughs>